Hadi. Masked and heavily armed, two men entered the building in the center of the French capital late this morning and began firing. By the time they'd stopped, at least 12 people were dead. Many others were seriously injured. The police were quickly on the scene, only to come under attack themselves. Charlie Hebdo, a satirical magazine, has been attacked before. Just over three years ago, its premises were firebombed after it published a caricature of the Prophet Muhammad. Good evening. I apologize if my voice is a little off today. I am somewhat ill. Um, but I had uh, a sort of a request kind of thing um, asked on Twitter yesterday by Thorium um, after I liked his video concerning the rise of Islam in the West. Now this is something that concerns me greatly because Islam, like all religions, is wholly illogical and immoral and ludicrous and ridiculous and so on and so forth but in particular Islam is the only religion at present that holds any measure of villainy to it for while things like the Catholic faith etc are also evil are also wrong and do cause and create and perpetuate atrocities it is to nowhere near the degree of hatred and terrorism that Islam does. Western culture does not inspire people to throw childish and homicidal religiously inspired tantrums whenever it feels insulted. It doesn't burn people's embassies down for the slightest jibe against its wafer-thin skin. It doesn't stab people to death in the streets for writing the wrong play, or try and behead them in the streets, or slaughter them with automatic gunfire, simply because someone drew some cartoons. Indeed, let's count the number of religions the entire number of religions in the 21st century who would pull stuff like this. It seems to me there is only one, one unique religion that can lay claim to making people this psychotic over something as trivial as cartoons. Because when I make a joke about the Pope, he doesn't send one of the Swiss guards in their striped pantaloons <laughs> to stick a pike in my ass. <laughs> When I make a Jewish joke, rabbis make kvetch about it, but they don't pull out a scimitar and threaten an adult circumcision. But I can already hear the chorus, but, but, but what about the moderates? Well, what about them? How does that in any way negate the fact that it was their religion, that in a way that is all but unique to Islam, that inspired these Muslims to kill unarmed French cartoonists with assault weapons? We've had a number of terrorist attacks in the West by Muslims in the name of Islam targeting non-Muslim populations for various reasons. Sometimes it's blasphemy, as in the case of Charlie Hebdo, it was um, because they drew an image of the Prophet Muhammad, something I've done myself and I will compel everyone to do just to piss them off. And unfortunately, it's actually significantly more commonly, just for being the West, as is the case for 9-11, for the 7-7 um, bombings in London, and so on and so forth. 
The issue is this. An individual Muslim may not be wrong. An individual Muslim may not believe in Islam. And it's, that's the way it works, is this no true Scotsman concept. That those who do these things, who commit these terrorist acts are not true Muslims when in actual fact they are the truest Muslims of all. If there is some... If, if you... If we live in a world, as we do now, whereby a person can claim to be one thing and regardless of its definition they are assumed to be that thing by their having claimed it. You can say, I'm a feminist, and you become a feminist. You can say, hey, I'm secretly a fish, and guess what, you're secretly a fish. If we live in such a world, then you have to say that those who claim to be this way are this way. So if you say they're not true Muslims, I have to say, so what is a true Muslim? And the answer is always, well, you know, it's these you know, considerate Sunni Muslims who don't do anything wrong or believe anything bad. And I would say, well, an awful lot of Sunni Muslims do believe bad things as I'll show you in a moment. Can we have the camera, can we have this camera focusing on all the audience, sir? Can we have this camera focusing on all the audience? Because every now and then, every time we have a conference, every time we invite a speaker, they always can come with the same accusations. This speaker supports death penalty for homosexuals. This speaker supports death penalty for this crime or this crime or that. He is homophobic. He, they subjugate women, etc., etc., etc. It's the same old stuff coming all the time. And we always try to tell them, I always try to tell them that, look, it's not that speaker that we're inviting who has these extreme radical views, as you say. These are general views that every Muslim actually has. Every Muslim believes in these things. Just because they're not telling you about it, or just because they're not out there in the media, doesn't mean they don't believe in them. So I will ask you, everyone in the room, how many of you are normal Muslims, you're not extremist, you're not radical, just normal Sunni Muslims. Please raise your hands. Everybody, mashaAllah, subhanAllah. Okay, take down your hands again. How many of you agree that men and women should sit separate? Please raise your hands. Everyone agree. Everyone agree, the brothers and sisters, subhanAllah. So, so it's not just these radical sheikhs then. Allahu Akbar. Next question. How many of you agree that the punishments described in the Quran and the Sunnah, whether it is death, whether it is stoning for adultery, whatever it is, if it is from Allah and His Messenger, that is the best punishment ever possible for humankind and that is what we should apply in the world well, who, who agrees with that Allahu Akbar are you all the radical extremists subhanallah so all of you are saying that you are common Muslims you all go to the different massages no way or is it are you like a specific sect like the Islam net sect or anything like that are you like that no is it, are you like that? Please raise, your, please raise your hand if you like this extreme Islam, that sect or anything like that. No one. Allahu Akbar. How many of you just go to these normal mas masajids in Norway? Every, the normal Sunni mosques. Please raise your hands. Allahu Akbar. Admiral Akbar indeed. Um, <laughs> Islam like all other religions, is evil. Its teachings are immoral, they are ridiculous. And the practices of its members are also ridiculous and immoral and evil. 
and there is a great deal of there are a great deal of issues concerning Islam in the West. For instance, the increased activity in the United Kingdom of um, Muslim rape gangs raping um, young girls. For instance, the case in um, which was it, Rotherham? Yes, Rotherham, where more than 1,400 children were raped by Pakistanis, specifically Muslim Pakistanis. And where this unfortunately was exacerbated by a culture of political correctness, wherein Islamophobia is a word we accept and apply to one another where because of the issues surrounding race and religion and in terms of people believing that uh, recognizing race or religion in certain circumstances is uh, wrong what you end up with is instances like this where more than 1400 children were violently raped by Muslims and we couldn't prosecute, we couldn't stop it simply because they were Pakistani Muslims where had they been white and English it would have never happened if it showed any signs of ever potentially occurring it would have been stopped but because they were Muslim and because they were Pakistani we couldn't do anything about it because our official guidelines enshrined in law say well you don't want to seem racist do you one of the practices that is what things people often forget about Islam are things like the Prophet Muhammad penis be upon him is sorry was a paedophile and a child rapist who married a I think a six year old although apparently he didn't have sex with her until she was nine so that's uh, okay uh, apparently <laughs> someone they worship believed to be beyond the concept of sin cannot possibly have done anything wrong was a child rapist who also practiced something apparently very common particularly in um, the East with larger Muslim populations but apparently also in England um, something called thighing which is an Islamic practice whereby a Muslim male masturbates himself by uh, taking his erect penis and placing it between the thighs of a prepubescent girl. Now thighing isn't actually restricted to this um, <laughs> because it also includes sodomy in some definitions and as well there's a, a number of ah, writings on this by Muslim scholars and Muslim leaders um, uh, pedophilia decrees from Islamic Fatwa on that. Question 1809. After the Permanent Committee for Scientific Research and Fatwas, Religious Decrees, reviewed the question forwarded by the Grand Scholar of the Committee with reference number 1809, issued on blah 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 blah, blah Islamic calendar, uh, it has become widespread these days, and especially during weddings, the habit of Mufakharit of the children. Mufakharit literally translated means placing between the thighs, which means placing the male member between the thighs of a child. What is the opinion of scholars knowing full well that the Prophet, the peace be the peace of Allah be upon him, also practiced the thighing of Aisha, the mother of believers? May Allah be pleased with her. Answer. After studying the issue, the committee has answered as follows. As for the Prophet, his thighing his fiancée Aisha when she was six years of age and not able to consummate the relationship was due to her small age. This is why the Prophet used to place his male member between her thighs and massage it, as the Prophet had control of his male member, not unlike other men. 
Ayatollah Ruhollah Khamenei. I hope I'm pronouncing these correctly. The Supreme Leader of Iran, the Shia Grand Ayatollah, 1979 to 89, said his official statements: "A man can quench his sexual lust with a child as young as a baby." However, he should not penetrate. Sodomizing the baby is halal, allowed by Sharia. If the man penetrates and damages the child, then he should be responsible for her sustenance all her life. This girl, however, does not count as one of his four permanent wives. The man will not be eligible to marry the girl's sister. It is better for a girl to marry when her menstruation starts, though not uh, required. And at her husband's house rather than at her father's home, any father marrying his daughter so young will have a permanent place in heaven. It is not illegal for an adult male to thigh or enjoy a young girl who is still in the age of weaning, meaning to place his penis between her thighs and to kiss her. This kind of thing is prominent in Islamic nations and does occur in the United States and in Britain. Islam is antithetical to Western values of freedom and morality and not being psychotic, paedophilic murderers. Either you accept that all people who claim to be Muslims are Muslims, in which case you have to admit that there are evil Muslims who do the things they do in the name of Islam and should be opposed, or you accept that anyone who claims to be a Muslim is not necessarily a Muslim. If you believe the latter, then you have to define what a Muslim is. If it's what I would believe it to be, which is someone who follows the teachings of Islam, then all these terrorists, these rapists, these murderers are indeed Muslims. And the bizarre, bizarre, the vast majority of those who claim to be Muslims would therefore not, by definition, be Muslims. The no true Scotsman will not help you here. It will only serve to make my case stronger. Islam is currently the only religion that needs to be guarded against. Um, there are a number of reasons for this that should have been obvious by now. Um, uh, there are a number of people wanting to do this, a number of ways people have suggested. Now, of course, there are certain ways that you could do it. You could definitely do it. Things like murdering all the Muslims would technically do it. I would never suggest that as an actual viable option because there would be immoral, hugely. Um, same with things like ban banning Islam. Banning the practice of Islam in Western nations, I believe, is also immoral and shouldn't occur. While it would technically prevent further issues, it is immoral. I believe people have the right to hold a belief no matter how flawed and ridiculous and stupid and dangerous it is. If someone believes I'm villainous for not believing in Allah, so be it. If he tries to kill me, I'll kill him right back. But that does not mean that all Muslims are like that. It just means Islam is like that. Uh, one of the organizations uh, that Thorium actually mentioned um, is uh, Pegida, a German group. Um, uh, it's a, an acronym, but I can't remember what the, what the letters stand for. Um, and I have here a list of their political positions, and I'm going to go through them and see what I agree with and what I don't. Uh, they have 19 bulleted position statements. Number one. They affirm the right of asylum for war refugees and politically persecuted people. That seems reasonable and rational enough. I can agree with that. Number two, they advocate to include a duty to integrate into the German basic law. Uh, that seems fairly reasonable, because this will include things like obeying German law. If you go to Germany to live, you obey the German laws. That seems quite reasonable. Number three, 
advocates for decentralized housing of refugees. The idea presumably here is to uh, prevent communities of um, refugees or that are occurring, uh, to prevent slum areas from taking place, to prevent um, it's, it's the prison principle. You take a, a group of like-minded people and put them together, what's going to happen is you're going to perpetuate their like-minded ideas. People that go into prison as just some guy who, I don't know, j did joyriding once, comes out as a hardened criminal with uh, the ability to steal diamonds and a mindset that wants him to rape and murder people. And this is presumably to prevent that kind of thing occurring with uh, populations of uh, Muslims and other refugees and immigrants, which seems fairly reasonable. If potentially offensive, but I don't see any reason why anyone should ever take offence to anything, so fuck them if they're offended. Number four, suggests creation of a central refugee agency for a fair allocation of immigrants among countries of the European Union. That seems fairly reasonable. If all they're doing is attempting to flee their current nation, it shouldn't matter to them which European Union country it is that houses them unless they are specifically trying to get to a specific place, in which case, provided they are capable of doing so, they should be allowed. Seems fairly reasonable to me. Number five, demands a decrease in the number of asylum seekers per social worker from the current 200 to 1 ratio. That is entirely admirable. 200 to 1 is a ridiculous amount. Number six, suggests to model German immigration policies after those of the Netherlands and Switzerland and demands an increased budget for the Federal Office for Migration and Refugees to speed up processing of applications. I don't know enough about the um, immigration policies in the Netherlands and Switzerland, so I can't comment really on here, but I'm guessing that they're pretty good if they, if they really want to copy them. Number seven, demands an increase in funding for the police. Okay, seems reasonable. Number eight demands implementation of all asylum laws, including expulsion. Yes, if you have laws and they are not being upheld, then they need to be upheld. Uh, number nine mentions zero tolerance towards criminal refugees and immigrants. That seems reasonable as well. Number ten states that Brigida opposed a misogynistic and violent political ideology, but does not oppose assimilated and politically moderate Muslims. This is the same position I take. I will oppose Islam, I will not oppose any generic Muslim. Generic Muslim I have nothing against. Well, apart from the fact that he's a member of a religion. Number eleven supports immigration as in Switzerland, Canada, Australia and South Africa. Reasonable again. Number 12 states that Pegida support sexual self-determination, opposing early sexualization of children, that is to say, pedophilia, etc. Again, entirely reasonable. Number 13 argues for the protection of Germany's traditionally Judeo-Christian culture. Not something I care about. I couldn't give a fuck if Germany was um, Judeo-Christian and continued to be. If they ended up as atheistic, non-religious people, that would be better, I would think. So I can't support them on number 13, um, but I'm not a member anyway, so... Mm. Number 14 supports the introduction of referenda as in Switzerland, again, fine. Number 15 opposes weapon export to radical and non-permitted groups such as the PKK, entirely reasonable. Number 16 opposes parallel societies slash parallel jurisdictions, for example, Sharia courts, Sharia police and peace judges, entirely reasonable, rational and necessary for a functioning society. Number 17 states that Begida opposed gender mainstreaming and political correctness. Fan fucking tastic. Number 18 indicates that Pegida opposed any radicalism, whether religious or politically motivated. Good, good, good. Number 19 states that Pegida opposed hate speech regardless of religion. Now, I'm not sure what their definition of hate speech is, but if so, I would say yes. I agree with that. I do not agree with censoring hate speech, not at all. I agree with opposing it, though. What do I mean by this? Um, I don't believe in censorship. I believe in freedom of expression. I believe if you have any opinion or whatever it is, you should be permitted to use it, utilize it, say it, whatever, in whatever manner you see fit. Uh, I would never prevent someone else from doing so. I don't even like block comments or whatever. Although occasionally comments don't show up after people send on videos because Google has a weird thing where they automatically block certain ones and I don't know about it because they don't send me an email. But if I actually go on to one of my videos, it'll say, oh, by the way, some comments are blocked. And I'll be like, oh, fuck, which ones are there? I actually don't do them. And so sometimes your comments might not show up. And 
I'm sorry for that. But um, I, I will not oppose freedom of speech, not in any way. But if someone says something like, um, I hate all Muslims, Muslims are evil, Muslims deserve to go and die in a ditch, kill all the Muslims, then I'll be like, well, hang on a second. <laughs> but no, that's not going to, don't do that, it's wrong. I won't stop him saying it, but I'll say that I don't agree with it. And that's the difference between opposing hate speech and censoring hate speech. Because we definitely live in a world where freedom of speech is curtailed in every avenue where in England now you no longer have freedom of speech or in fact due process if you're a man where you no longer have innocent or proven guilty and where you no longer have your right to say whatever you will. I mean we never really did in England but now it's got to the point where we can't share we can't say what we want. In fact, actually, I'm pretty sure one of the uh, videos uh, I use in this video has a disclaimer that says that it, it's not permitted to be used uh, by anyone without permission. And I haven't got permission, so I guess that's illegal. Ah, well, fuck it. I believe people should be allowed to say whatever they want. And I believe that radical Islam is basically accurate Islam and that it must be opposed. And that there is a culture of political correctness that is perpetuating this. There is a, a multiculturalist agenda which unfortunately is allowing greater and greater integration of Muslim ideals in Britain and the United States and that unfortunately an increasing population of Muslims is having adverse effects. And uh, Sam Vakad in his um, Rape Culture UK video um, uh, has a link to a study which I'll link in the uh, description below that said um, they had a list of um, rapes, uh, there should be child rapes um, committed by people in Britain and their, among other things, their ethnicity of the attacker. And while Muslims are only about 5% of the population of Britain, um, the amount of rapes, I think, committed by them, is child rapes, pedophilic rapes, was 28%. Uh, and this was when, I think, 38% of those um, people involved in this didn't have their ethnicities recorded. They were only 2% behind white people, Caucasians who are automatically the most likely to be the most, um, the people who perform it the most because of course most people in England are Caucasian, are white. Now, people may not like my opinions, they may not like what I say, they may not even agree with me, and that's fine. Um, I will oppose Islam as I would oppose any other religion, but I will oppose Islam more fervently because it is so dangerous. I think it is our job and our duty to insult and to fight against and to offend Muslims in any way we can. I think it is our right and our responsibility to oppose a hateful ideology. That's about all I have to say on that. Um, hmm. I'll leave you with kitchens. Take care everyone, fuck off, and of course, good luck. Resist it right now.